Hello everyone, welcome back, this is Adam. And in today's episode of Azure Fundamentals, I will show you how to explore and understand the cost of your Azure environment with use of Azure Cost Management Service. Stay tuned. Today's episode is fairly quick and straightforward because we only need to describe the functionality and the usage of Azure Cost Management Service. That means we need to describe what the cost management is for and what are the core functionalities that it delivers for you as a customer. So let's go into cost management itself. During our Azure Fundamentals journey, we've mentioned multiple times how the cost of our Azure environment is solely based on the usage. That means if we need more services, we scale them up and start paying more. When we don't need them, we scale them down and immediately see the cost reduction. And each of those services is tracked separately. So you really pay only for what you use depending on the pricing tier of the services that you configured. Each service additionally has multiple metrics that are being tracked in order to ensure that the billing is calculated properly. And the purpose of Azure Cost Management is to grab all of that data and present it to you in an easy to ingest format. In this case, a very small self-service reporting capability tool within Azure. In order to access cost management inside of the Azure portal, you simply search for cost. At the very top, by searching for cost, you will find a service called cost management and billing. When you select it, you will be immediately taken into Azure cost management. This is the place where you can start your navigation. In here, you will see all your subscriptions. You will see your invoices, payment methods, and the bills associated with each one of your subscriptions. And if you want to review the cost information of any particular subscription, simply select it. Then on the left hand side, you will find a section called cost management. Within this section, you will see cost analysis, cost alerts, budgets, and advisor recommendations. If you want to review the cost associated with your current Azure subscription, first of all, you can use this overview page or select cost analysis on the left hand side and start reviewing your current spendings. When this page loads, you are presented with a high level overview of the cost associated with your Azure subscription during the current billing period. In my case, it's March 3rd until April 2nd. But if you want, you can change that. For example, change it to last month. This way we can review the actual cost associated during the month of February 2021. For better spread and better understanding of my billing data, I can change the granularity from accumulated to daily and change grouping from none to, for instance, service name. This will allow me to better understand which services are driving my cost. For example, on February 6th, I can see higher usage on my Azure Logic Apps. This is because I was testing some services and some configuration during that time. If you want to understand your yearly billing, it is also as simple as changing February to last 12 months and then changing the granularity to monthly. This way you can understand what is the total cost of your Azure subscription in each month. As you can see, during the month of October, I paid a lot of money for Azure DDoS protection simply because I forgot to turn it off. I guess it happens to all of us. But with Azure Cost Management, without any technical knowledge, you can understand and review the key cost drivers for your Azure environment. There are a few more features of Azure Cost Management, like budgets. Budgets allow you to track the spending on your Azure services and get notified when you are nearing the budget limit. You can add a new budget provided with a name, let's say my budget say what is the resetting period for that budget. So if you want to have monthly budgets, then select billing month or monthly. Then what is the tracking time? So do you want to go by a billing period or maybe by a calendar month and then provide a budget amount, for example, 50 euro. And when you scroll down, you'll be able to see the currently set budget across multiple months in your Azure subscription and the estimation of the future usage. If you're happy with your budget, you can select next. And here comes the fun part. You can set up the alerts. So for example, if my actual usage will be at 50% of my budget, which accounts for 25 euros, 
I want to do something, for example, send myself an email. And now when I reach half of my budget, I simply will get an email notification. But one of the best features of Azure Cost Management is not only its self-service reporting capabilities, but the ability to review those costs at the resource group and the service level. What does it mean? For example, if we navigate to our resource groups, and let's say I'm an owner of a resource group called AZ900VM. If I will be granted permissions to this resource group, on the left-hand side, I can also find cost management section of Azure Cost Management Service. So as a resource group owner, I can select cost analysis. When the page loads, the scope will be narrowed down to only view the cost associated with this resource group. Therefore, I can review the cost of my Azure resources within this resource group. Just a brief reminder, resource groups are a logical container used to organize your resources by a life cycle, typically by an application. This way, application owners and development teams can review the cost of their Azure services and act and optimize their services to be as cost effective as possible. And that's really amazing because there are no special privileges that you need. If you give someone an access to the resource group, then they will be able to review the cost as well. To summarize, Azure Cost Management is a centralized service for reporting usage and billing of your Azure environment. And primarily, it allows for self-service cost exploration in your Azure environment. This allows you to decentralize responsibilities when it comes to the cost of Azure services and allow application teams for effective management of their Azure environments without need of any special privileges. With budgets and alerts, you can track the usage and get notified if you're nearing your monthly estimated cost for your Azure environment. One thing to note here is that budgets are not a hard limit, so you cannot stop Azure services when budgets are reached. Although you can use budgets to do some automation, so if you're nearing the budget, you can execute some scripts that maybe will shut down your machines. Additionally, Azure Cost Management is integrated with Azure Advisor, so you will see cost recommendation associated with your Azure resources. And lastly, if you want some advanced reporting capabilities, Azure Cost Management allows you to automatically export billing information into a CSV on Azure Blob Storage. So you can connect with any kind of reporting tool like Power BI and perform some advanced cost analysis. That said, let me discuss how to minimize the cost of Azure Platform based on what we've learned in the last few episodes. First of all, use Azure Pricing Calculator to find the low cost regions for your Azure environment. But remember that the choice of region is not based on the price alone. Remember to pick region that also has a good latency to where your customers and your company is. Additionally, choose a region that has all the required services available. And lastly, also consider data sovereignty and compliance requirements of the applications that you will be building. But also, Check if you can use Azure Hybrid Benefit and reuse some existing licenses, especially if you're moving from on-premise environments. If you have some very stable workloads, consider reserving some of the services within Azure with Azure reservations. Thirdly, use Azure Cost Management to monitor, set up budgets, alerts, and even use recommendations to make sure that you're using your Azure platform effectively. But it's definitely worth to understand the life cycle of your Azure environments. If you see that the development environment doesn't have to run 24 by 7, maybe it's good to automate and shut it down every day and let developers turn those machines on when they need them. But also remember to take advantage of auto-scaling feature of Azure platform so that you only scale and create bigger services when needed and scale down when they are not needed. Additionally, use Azure Monitor to find underutilized services and simply scale them down. Azure allows you to scale down and scale up at any time, so you don't lose anything, you just save some money. But besides that, as a last point, I want to just mention that remember about tags for effective resource management and identifying cost owners, but also about Azure policy, which allows you to effectively manage your Azure environment. For example, a good policy for your environment would be forbid people from creating expensive resources on their dev test environments. By using your judgment and following those seven steps, 
you can save tremendous amount of money on your Arsho platform. All the materials for this episode can be found on episode 37 on my website. And we're done. But if you like my work, support the channel by subscribing, liking and commenting. If you want to move to the next episode, follow the playlist or hit the icon on the side. And as always, see you in the next one.